Folks, it is almost two years to the day since we have last talked Splue Monkeys, and I think, holy sh**, actually, that was pretty good timing, because Shadow Splue Monkeys here are and should be our main targets here today. We are talking Splue Monkey farming, everyone. Something that we have actually never done, and something that not many people give notice to, including yours truly, obviously. But maybe we should, so let's discuss. But of course, before we can even begin to think about any of these potential methods to be shown here today, we need to know where to actually begin to look for our monkey friends in the first place. Slew monkeys are found solely within the ruins, specifically the village biome, mind you, and are usually going to come in some pretty big numbers, which is good for us, obviously. But there is a problem. Village biomes are jam-packed with more than just blue monkeys, and world generations may not be too kind to some of these aforementioned methods. So, you need to be ready to pick and choose, or just simply improvise. But let us start with a basic method that honestly isn't even a farming method unless you make it one. The pen method. Cause usually, players just burn every pod they see, cause Splue Monkeys, specifically Shadow Splue Monkeys, are a pain in the butt to deal with. However, I am no fan of just murdering things to pure extinction. So, if you can manage to wall the pods off, even Shadow Splue Monkeys could easily be negated. Cause, for whatever reason, Slew Monkeys cannot target and rarely pass through wooden fences or just other walls, mind you, even though they are notorious for circumventing fossils, end tables, you name it. You know, things mobs aren't supposed to pass through. But with the pods walled off like this, they got nowhere to go. So hop inside, bonk them on the head with absolute ease, as they will be unable to run far from you as per usual, and boom. You have honestly just accomplished the most basic of Splue Monkey farming, folks. Each pod holds four monkeys, and a new one spawns after but two minutes upon death to boot. So there you go. But hold up, Beard. What about all the monkeys that are already out of their pods by the time we wall the pods in? Ah, yes. Unfortunately, there will be something to handle for sure. However, there's nothing to just stop you from using any of the other basic methods to kill them off in order to thus trap them with the pens when they respawn. So take the trap method here, for example. Likely second place on the easy list, per se. Bramble traps or teeth traps? Your choice. However, I will warn you not to plant them within the village itself, otherwise the sons of guns will actually steal the traps off the flipping ground. Oh, no, 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 no. You need to plant them close enough and come a nightmare cycle, simply lead a horde of shadowy death into the traps of your choice. And in my opinion, bramble traps take the cake, as you will use less traps overall due to their area of effect ranged attack compared to the single target attack of teeth traps. But use whatever floats your boats. Heck, most of these methods shown here today are just concepts more than anything. It's going to be up to you to optimize them to your liking. Oh, but here's one that needs no optimization, everyone. The follower method. To be honest, this might actually be the easiest method around, because all we need to do is either drag a group of rock lobsters or even bunny men over to a village, get them to target a slew monkey, and then do nothing. <laughs> Freezy, when we hit a monkey ourselves, the rest nearby flee and keep their distance, obviously looking to throw poo at our faces, of course. But when a follower, even Abigail, mind you, hits one, the rest come running to help it. So then, depending on how many monkeys there are, and just how long you want to actually stay down under, you can just get all the others to do all the work for you and reap all the rewards without lifting a finger. Good stuff. Ah, but speaking of doing nothing and getting paid for it, will anemones work, Beard? Actually, surprisingly, yes, they will, folks. Heck, all we are doing, really, is just building off our pen method by adding a circle of anemones close to the pods and just walling it all in as tightly as possible. And that's the key, otherwise it won't be as efficient as you like. 
But before today, I actually wasn't 100% sure if Splu Muckies both spawned or even transformed into Shadow Splu Muckies off screen. But yup, they actually do both, friends. So, if you want an automatic Splu Monkey farm or two, then you've got a trip to the Lunar Islands ahead of ya. Cause this is likely the only way to do it. So okay, how about Fire Farms Beard? Eh, yes, but it won't be as easy as the others, mind you. Not even close. Now the setup is actually the same, with a long kill zone and grass tufts, for example, littering the ground within it. But this time, we're not exactly going to be able to trap the blue monkeys in with bait, as doing this with regular monkeys is not going to be efficient enough. So we will be needing to have the door open and kindling at the ready before every farm takes place or else we are screwed because the shadows blue monkeys are not going to wait on us. At the end of the day, however, the idea is the same. Get them within the kill zone, lock yourself in safely, light the place up, be ready to turn your flingo on the moment they start dying and profit. Well, Hopefully that is. It is not the easiest thing in the world, especially with these things. But it sure is fast and is highly repeatable. So there you go. But all right now, we enter the more character specific side of things, everyone. Winona's catapults are absolutely insane tools of destruction within this game and could certainly be used here today as well. That is, with a bit of finicky setups at times. Again, Splu monkeys love passing through impassable things like end tables, fossil fragments, and statues. But unfortunately, we can't use man-made walls in place of them because Winona's catapults destroys them. So then, here's where some improvisation usually comes into play. Either make a setup within the biome itself to kill monkeys and spiders all the dang time potentially, or just run Shadow Spoon Monkeys to your setup somewhere outside of the biome perhaps. But whatever the case, as amazing as the catapults will be in these scenarios, the monkeys are going to give you a headache more often than not. You're going to be running your little tootsies off. So my advice is this, remain vigilant at all times around these things, bait out their attacks and hopefully that gives enough time for the catapults to fling at them, and no matter what bloody method you choose, just be aware that Shadow Swoop Monkeys suck. However, remain especially vigilant with these methods, the tentacles. Honestly, as good as this could be, it would likely be at the bottom of my list, even if I were playing the old hag herself. Because for one thing, every reed will drop your sanity and spawn three tentacles that could just as easily kill you as they do the monkeys. And for another, collecting the loot will always be an issue with tentacle farms. But all that said, you can either choose to randomly spawn tentacles around the pods themselves as seen here, or force the tentacles to spawn in a concentrated area using walls and fences. For you see, tentacles cannot spawn in occupied tiles, so placing walls within those tiles on one side of you for about five tiles deep will force them to spawn to the other side of you alone, thus creating a kill zone of slappy death. So, making sure the door is bloody open already, lead a group of shadow spoon monkeys into it, and sit back and watch the carnage. But yes, how will we be getting any of the loot then, Beard? Because we've kind of created a big time death zone for us here. Well, unfortunately, you really only have two options. Carefully and slowly pick everything up a couple items at a time, or craft and use a lazy forager from the ancient pseudoscience station. So yeah, use the tentacle method at your own very high risk, friends. But yes, quickly now, why are we even doing any of this? Well, Splu Monkeys drop a guaranteed morsel, so you should be getting meat for days. And meat for days means lots of potential jerky, meat dishes, eggs, and more. In short, it's food. You bloody eat it. But bananas are also a food within this game, albeit a forgotten one, because they only come from two dang places, Slu Monkeys and Cape Banana Trees. But thankfully, Slu Monkeys also drop one each and every time. So a Slu Monkey farm is really the only time lots of bananas are going to be around. But why bother? 
Well, mostly for banana pops, really. One banana, one ice, and two twigs for nearly 30 hunger, 33 sanity, 20 health, and a temperature decrease. Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. So farm away. Ah, uh, yes, but why the focus on Shadow's Blue Monkey's beard? Well, for one thing, they are easier to farm overall due to their aggro, of course. But for another, they not only drop the same guaranteed morsel and banana, but also beard hair and nightmare fuel to boot. Well, the nightmare fuel is actually going to drop 50% of the time, but beard hair here is actually guaranteed, folks. So use it for additional burnies or even meat effigies to stay alive after death. But yes, that Nightmare Fuel drop. At a 50% drop rate, Shadow Spoon Monkeys may be one of the best sources of the stuff around simply given their numbers, as we don't need to actually be insane all the time to kill them. So a Shadow Spoon Monkey farm is worth a note simply for that, I feel. But magic and ancient magic? Here we come. And there you have everyone. Sort of a random guide on Sploo monkey farming after all this bloody time for whatever reason. But I think it will be a good one nonetheless. Heck, even I gained a newfound appreciation for the potential of them simply due to how versatile they truly can be. But believe me, folks, dealing with Sploo monkeys is a tedious, annoying, and downright dangerous task. So be prepared well before preparing for monkey murder. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.